Welcome to the Built to Scale series, Outside Marketing, bringing you quick, actionable episodes to help move your business forward. Here's your host, Craig Severinsen. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Outside Marketing, the show where we talk about how do you build a thriving business without sacrificing your personal life. I'm Craig Severinsen, and today we're talking about what makes a great email campaign. And uh, I'm really excited about this. I think we can split this into two categories, uh, ongoing email marketing and uh, specific campaigns where you are actually like you have an offer, you're making a sale, right? And so there's going to be a lot of writer downers here. Grab your pen, grab your paper and get ready to take some notes because I think we're going to drop a lot of really good value bombs today. As always, if you're enjoying this, check out Built to Scale HQ.com. That's where the podcast Built to Scale lives. And that's where um, you can get more resources. You can even see how you can work with me in the Built to Scale membership, which the doors are open right now to the Built to Scale membership. I'm really excited. If you want to implement a proven business growth framework in your business, you're going to want to check out Built to Scale and the Built to Scale membership. All right, cool. Let's talk about email marketing. So uh, this is on my mind because I uh, didn't really think about it, <laughs> but I am leaving today to go out of town with my family. And uh, yesterday I had my webinar. So we had over a hundred people registered for the webinar and we had a great turnout and we did, uh, you know, a lot of education and we did the pitch uh, like we always do. And uh, I sent out the follow-up emails and we've got all of the other emails written but none of them were queued up. So since I'm going out of town, I was like, oh man, I better get these all queued up. So I stayed up late last night, just getting emails set up and ready to go. So it, that's why it's on my mind, but it got me thinking about my time before I went all in on my business as a fundraiser. And one of the most impactful things that I used was email marketing. Every time we did an email fundraising campaign, we would raise between seventy-five and hundred thousand dollars in just a couple of days using the email marketing, and uh, part of that was because it was an engaged list. Part of that was because um, you know it, it was people like to give. It was a good cause. But what always struck me was not just the money coming in. Like it was really cool to be like, oh man, we just raised a hundred thousand dollars in one weekend because of this email marketing campaign. Like we set it, <laughs> you know, it'd be cool. You'd set it on Friday. It would go out all weekend. You'd be at home. And the do donations would be running in. And I always thought that was cool. But the bigger thing to me was how many people would reach out and want to come volunteer or would want to get involved on a deeper level. And to me, that's when I really understood that email marketing is really effective to getting people to take action in terms of financially. But it's also a really great way to talk to people, to build a relationship and get them to take action, not just with their money, but like in life, right? To, to, this is a maybe a, a corny way to say it, but to win their hearts, right? To really win them over to a cause or to an ideal, email marketing is a great way to do that because you're getting in their inbox, right? Which is which is powerful. So I think when you think about should I or should I not be doing email, uh, there's two big reasons why you should be doing email. And I think, well, maybe we should say three because number one, given you own that list, you own that asset. So if you're building your audience on um, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you might be building your audience, if you are not also translating that into an email list, you're really taking a gamble. Because what happens, and this does happen all the time, what happens when Facebook changes their rules and uh, groups are no longer as effective as they used to be, which they've done before? What happens when they change their rules and pages are no longer as effective as they used to be? What happens when you get banned because of their weird bots that ban ads all the time, right? Like it, that's just an example of Facebook, but that could be any other platform. Uh, email list, you own the list, you have it, it's tangible. And if uh, email provider, you know, whoever you're working with, Active Campaign, MailChimp, Infusionsoft, whoever, right? If they change their rules, you just take your list and you go to somebody else, right? Because you own that asset. So I, that's a bonus one. Number one is you own the asset. But number two and three, you know, why you should be doing this is because you can build relationships with people, real ones, win their hearts. And two, you can indoctrinate and teach. Indoctrinate is one of those words that is, um, you know, kind of touchy, right? <laughs> Indoctrination. But really, that's what you're doing when you're teaching, right? Is you're trying to get someone to think the way you think. You're trying to get them to 
to uh, come over to your side of the argument. And so email is a great way to indoctrinate them in terms of teaching them your way of thinking and getting them to come, come on board with you. Okay, so let's talk about um, what you actually have to do to make a great email campaign. And first of all, what you have to do is build what I call a visibility acceleration system, which is that system that you are getting in front of new audiences and you're nurturing your audiences. Remember, uh, the Built to Scale framework teaches us to think about your business in terms of a set of systems, a, a collection of systems and processes so that you can actively improve your business, make sure things are looking looking good, you know, improvement uh, along the way with consistency. We're making sure that we're always getting visible. We're always building that email list. We're always nurturing, right? So think about this in terms of systems. So building a visibility acceleration system is what I call it is, you know, that's what you have to do if we just put it in really broad terms. But what makes a really good email campaign? Um, and I've got four things for you in terms of what makes a really good email campaign. Number one, is it's got to be you focused. So this was a lesson I learned again when I was fundraising. At first, when I started doing the emails, they weren't very, very effective. And then I did one little trick that changed the, the, the rate at which people donated. It changed the rate at which people responded. And it was one little shift. I started doing what I called a you audit. And what I would do is I would read through my copy and count the number of times it said you. And I started changing. Anytime I said I or we, I would change it to say you. And uh, the phrase is you is glue, right? When you talk about them and what's important to them, they pay attention. And so by counting and changing everything to be you focused, you start changing the message to be more applicable to your audience, which means they're going to be more engaged. They're going to be more responsive. So you is glue. Do a you test count how many times you say the word you, make it you focus. Okay. So that was number one. Number two, conversational emails. There's a time and place, especially if you're doing like, um, you know, when I do a webinar I, and I'm giving them the information of like, Hey, here's, thanks for signing up. Here is when we're, when, uh, the information for getting on the call, that sort of stuff. It's a little bit more professional and polished. I'll have the logo. I'll have a header. I'll have a, a headline. It looks a lot like an email you would get from Amazon, right? Very polished, very professional. But in my normal email marketing, especially when I start to sell or when I'm nurturing and educating, I don't want it to look like it's coming from a big professional polished brand. I want it to make it look like it's coming from a friend, right? So I write to an individual. I don't write in generalities. I make it really conversational. And uh, I just use a plain text email, right? The signature at the end is me. It's me talking to them. I'm the face of my company, make it really conversational because that's what people want. That's the magic of the inbox, right? Is you're getting in there and you're having one-to-one -one conversations in a one-to-many format. It's magic, right? It's magic. That's how you do that. So be really conversational in tone and you'll get a lot better results as you do that. Number three is consistency. So number one, you focus. Number two, keep it conversational. Number three, be consistent. Um, and I'm awful at this too. Like, so don't, uh, don't beat yourself up if you struggle with this, but consistency is super, super important. Instead of doing these big bursts of emails, what you really want to be is just consistently in their inbox, consistently educating them. Now you might have bigger bursts when you're selling something, right? When you're doing a campaign for like sales, you'll do, um, you know, maybe a week or two week of campaigns where it's like a little bit more tense, a little bit more, um, sorry about that the notification came up on my phone. So I put my hand up to move it and I didn't realize I was putting it in front of the screen. Um, but when you're doing a email campaign, uh, to sell, you know, maybe like two weeks a week of like really intense, you're emailing a lot more often, but when you're nurturing, just make sure you're consistent once a month, once a week, you know, some people, there's a guy, he, um, I won't, I won't give specifics about the, about the company because I don't have permission to share it, but he emails every single day and he swears by it every single day. So don't worry about um, how often you need to email because that's a moot point. The answer to that is how often can you provide value, which we'll talk about in a second. How often can you provide value? That's how often you should email. The second question is what's the frequency that you can consistently commit to? Because if you're, if you're consistent for 
three days and then you stop for three months, that's not going to cut it. Your email list is going to forget about you, right? So consistency, whether it's a month, weekly, biweekly, whatever, make sure you're consistent with it. Once a week is normally a great, you know, you can batch that together at the beginning of the month, write all four emails, send them out, or you can wake up once a week and just write an email. That's usually pretty doable. The question is, are you willing to commit to it? Right. And that again, that's the beauty of a visibility acceleration system is it holds you accountable to that consistency. Right. Are you in, you celebrate? I did the system today. Not I got these results. Focusing on results in terms of motivation is a bad idea because when you get the result, you're all excited. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And, but that excitement fades because guess what? As an entrepreneur, there's always another mountain to tackle. Right. And when you don't get the results, you're like, oh, this is dumb. I don't want to do it. So like focusing on results is a bad motivation tool. Focus on, did I do the system? Because if, if I can celebrate every day I showed up and I did my system, and by the way, once you start building team, those systems become departments. Did you follow your system? Did we improve on the system? Then true motivation and celebration really starts to pick up for you. Okay, and then the last point here. So our three points were be you focused, be conversational, be consistent. Number four is provide value. And I've said this again, what is value? Value is accomplished in action. You get value in implementation. So your content should encourage, inspire, and teach them to take action. Whatever that means for you in terms of your offer, your product, you should be educating them around, pushing them towards, inspiring them to not, you know, when I say pushing, not manipulating, but like encouraging them to take action that leads to a sale because that is where they're going to get results and results are the value that we really want for them, right? So what makes something value is are they moving closer to making a decision? Are they taking action that will result in them getting the results that you provide, aka making a purchase, right? That is true value. So always make your emails valuable. Okay, that's what I got for you today. Man, guys, it is gorgeous here. I always end talking about the weather because I'm outside. If you don't know, the purpose of outside marketing is to build it into my workout routine. So I'm out here. I've just finished my workout. It's been freezing cold and raining. Now it's starting to get green. It's 70 degrees out here. It's beautiful. I'm going to go finish my workout and I'm going to enjoy this beautiful morning. Until next time, take some fast focus, imperfect action. I believe in you. I got your back. We'll talk soon. See ya. Thanks for joining us. To check out all the Built to Scale episodes and to see how Craig can help you in your business, go to builttoscalehq.com.